Hello, everybody. Um, welcome back to Mentors and More. And uh, uh, please welcome Anna Tavane. Um, uh, and she is absolutely amazing. Uh, there's so many things that Anna actually does. Um, I don't want to step on her toes, so I want her to introduce herself to us. Um, so Anna Tavane, where ancient wisdom meets modern science. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be in your uh, podcast and uh, and to see you again. It's, it's been a while. Oh, well, yeah, it, it, it has. Can you give us a little bit of an introduction about, for those that don't know you, about uh, about yourself, and then just tell us about your journey and how you, how you got onto the therapies that you do? Yes, so... Um, I hold a master's degree in biology and chemistry, so this was my starting point. It was uh, the decision to uh, study biology and chemistry came from my um, my uh, passion for human body. I was fascinated from a very very early age how amazing human body is, how it changes, how it ages, and how we can have a huge impact on it when we exercise, when we eat differently, and etc. So this is why I started studying biology and chemistry. And I was a high school teacher and um, yeah. I was also practicing yoga throughout my 20s. And then end of 20s, I started to struggle with my health. I was switching through different types of diets. All of them made sense to me. So I was switching to vegetarian, to vegan. For a brief period of time, I was on a road diet. Mm -hmm. I was just exploring all of it. But then in my 20, late 20s, um, I suffered a, a very severe hormonal imbalance. And uh, because I was so into yoga, uh, I heard about Ayurveda many times prior, but it was obviously then that I really found logic in it and I found something that really resonated with myself, with my philosophy, with my way of living and uh, I came to London and I started studying at the College of Ayurveda to become an Ayurveda practitioner and eventually uh, I became part of their stuff so I'm teaching human anatomy and physiology at the College of Ayurveda and uh, nowadays in my mid-30s I have, I like to say that I have created this blend, signature blend of using food, breath and conscious movement where I really bring those two worlds, the scientific world from the West and this ancient philosophy of Ayurveda all together and making it approachable um, and functional for modern people to use them in their everyday uh, living. So I've been coaching people. I like to say guiding instead of coaching. Mm -hmm. Like I prefer to be called as a guide to help people navigate their modern lives and finding what resonates best with them, with their unique body. This is something that Ayurveda taught me that there is no one diet that fits all. There is no lifestyle that fits all. We are all different. We are all unique. We all have different needs, desires intentions and different constitutions. So everyone needs to find what uh, suits them best. And I strongly believe that Ayurveda, with the support of uh, the Western uh, science, can help everyone find uh, the formula for a balanced living, a joyful living. A healthy living, yeah, definitely. The, the, what strikes me, in, even in the yoga class that I run, the focus is on the the body, your body where you are right now, the force that your body can take, and also going at your own pace and knowing your limitations of your body. So it's not one pill for everyone. No. Everyone has a different, you know, approach to the, even a particular asana or a or a pranayam. You have to do it so that it suits you, and then you're able to keep up and sustain, and then build on it. And that Ayurveda. And yoga are like, you know, they're brother and sister. They're, it's not yeah. one without the other. So they, they are amazing. So at the moment, you're, is it just coaching that you're doing? Or are you practicing your um, you're teaching, you're coaching, and then you're also you have your own coaching? Yeah. I'm focusing more on education now. So the coaching, the guiding process was amazing and uh, very rewarding in many ways. But... To, because I saw that there is a bigger need, uh, 
higher number of people need guidance, um, especially in these modern times. So I started to focus more on education. Uh, I'm continuing to be the lecturer at the college, but I have also started a YouTube channel where I share free lectures on how to live this life of balance. So mm. this has been my focus lately and hopefully it's going to remain that way. I also contributed to writing a pregnancy book, a holistic, mm. holistic pregnancy book. So mm. I also collaborated uh, on this book. It's from Nina Pearson. She's amazing and she wrote a book on holistic pregnancy. So I contributed with my Ayurvedic perspective on pregnancy, uh, delivery and postpartum period. So I think I'm going to continue writing something on my own uh, to really bring this knowledge to. Yeah, so it's amazing own. sharing your talks so everyone can benefit from it. And, um... You know, I saw when I was, um, as I've been uh, coaching people, mostly women actually, and I saw a similar pattern. So basically all of them, they struggle with hormonal issues mm -hmm. and they all came with different symptoms, but the underlying cause was a hormonal imbalance so mm. with so many women coming to me i really saw this underlying pattern and i thought okay if this is something that causes suffering to especially women around the world if i can do something to prevent women and men of course from ending up with the struggle then uh, this is my calling and this is my path. So that's why I started a YouTube channel because I want to help people prevent uh, this struggle. And uh, yeah. And sustain their wellness as well, yeah. reverse it and then sustain that reversal. What kind of issues do you typically, you, you mentioned um, there were the underlying cause was hormonal imbalances. What were the symptoms? Can we cover some of those? Oh, absolutely. I, I like to say that there, there seems to be like a silent epidemic happening to women and men uh, around the world. And the numbers are really insane. Like, for example, more than 20 million um, of women, they suffer from polycystic ovary syndrome, from endometriosis, mm -hmm. uterine fibroids, infertility, obesity, osteoporosis. And so many men uh, suffer from low sperm count, erectile dysfunction. Um, prostate problems and uh, developing feminine body features. So these are like mm -hmm. most common, but really the list is huge. So people don't uh, are not familiar that even exper experiencing dryness of the skin, oiliness of the skin, losing hair or growing hair on places where we don't want them on the body are all already signs of hormonal imbalance. And uh, what mm -hmm. Ayurveda taught me is that there are many levels in the uh, development of a disease. And the time when we start experiencing symptoms, the imbalance is already there and it has already undergone three stages of uh, disease development. So if we wow. educate people, if we teach them that there, there doesn't have to be a, rep, um, a huge change in their lifestyle, but simply by implementing some practical uh, rituals or slightly uh, accommodating their diet and lifestyle to their unique body, they can prevent all of these things from happening to them. Mm -hmm. And you know, the cancer, the heart issues, diabetes, it's becoming almost a norm to, to hear all these conditions and having someone in our family suffering from it. I don't uh, think this, this should be a, a no. It's not, and it's just so destructive. I'm going to tell you my story, Anna. So I suffered from PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, for most of my life. And uh, I would not have periods for up to nine months at a time. And then I would be bleeding heavily. Not very nice for anybody to go through. Um, and, you know, these problems can lead to miscarriage, which I suffered. And oh. also... Um, you know, and not an easy temperament because your hormones, you, you, nothing in your body is balanced and it's not working as it should be. So you are feeling that heightened anxiety or mood swings I would get. Uh, and then I went uh, from then, and as a child, I also suffered from um, dark patches on my skin and I never knew why. So like around my neck or on my chest. And, and then later on, I discovered that it's actually insulin resistance. No. So I was actually overweight as a child um, and most, and then it kind of, I lost a little bit in my teens and then 
I thought when I started working in an office environment, I was sitting down, not being mindful of what I ate. And then the weight just piled on, was in a very stressful marriage at the time when I was very young. Okay. Um, so all of those, the stress, the food, the lifestyle, and obviously suffering from PCOS from a, from a young age, that all kind of amalgamated. And um, throughout both of my pregnancies with my children, I had gestational diabetes. So it was uncontrolled in the first one. And then the second one, I was on very, very high doses of insulin, very high. And uh, it, it's literally, and then my son is nearly three now. So let's go back, going back to last year. Last year, I started losing weight of rapidly and muscle really, really rapidly, really, really getting weak, um, not being able to pick things up, having a lot of joint issues. And then I did it. Cortisol build up in the body was a stress. Stress. I, I think lockdown was announced. I think I'd lost my home help. I was under a lot of pressure. Yeah. Everything was, you know, exacerbated. And then when um, they did my HB1C last year, it came up at 94. So the normal level is 48. And they say that you're diabetic at 48. So I was way, way up here somewhere. So I really I used Ayurveda and homeopathy. And I had a huge, huge lifestyle change. And within three months, I brought that number down from 94 to 64. That's amazing. Yeah, and it was a lot of hard work and determined a lot. But I had a lot. I had. I knew where to get the help, and I knew it would work. I believed in it, and uh, it is possible. And I'm maintaining that. And I believe and through the yoga. I believe that every day the hormonal balance is rectified, gets sound, because uh, there are the once we combat the stress. That's just one part of you know the, with the stress has caused the. And, um, and the hormone balances have kind of led to the diabetes being so bad. But going back, it's not just physical. I can't just pop a pill. Popping a pill is not going to help me no. long term. So this is how I used Ayurveda and um, homeopathy and yoga. So the yoga really helped. Med meditation really helped to calm my mind and slow my mind down. I had to reassess my life. I was overstretching myself. So many different things. And I did put a mammoth effort in. I'm not even lying. <laughs> it's been a huge lifestyle change. But I feel so much better for it. And because of that, I'm actually able to help other people through my yoga and discuss my issues with them. So, yeah, hormonal issues can get so bad that they affect your life in such oh, a bad way and can interfere. Yeah. I had unexplained infertility for years, yeah. for years and years. And actually how I got inspired by Ayurveda and why I fell in love with it. I actually went to a retreat in Kerala um, whilst I was studying at the College of Ayurveda. I don't know if you remember, I had a short break. Oh, you were my yeah. student. I yeah, do. Yeah. And then I went there and um, I told them that I, you know, I was trying to have another child and my periods were really scanty and I didn't know why. And I went through the detox, the Panchakrama program for mm -hmm. 21 days and it was hard. I cried. Some days I would come out and I would cry because I was just releasing emotions. Emotion. And knows what. Exactly. Emotions and built. Emotions, emotions are material, a material thing. So it literally solidifies. And yeah. most of our emotions are in fascia, which is an, an, like a wrap around the muscles. So, mm -hmm. you know, people feel pain when they are under stress, when they are emotionally imbalanced. They, they will always feel pain in a certain area in the body. It is the actual site where their emotions get crystallized. So they become a material yeah. stuff. So when you do yoga, when you do panchakarma, which is amazing, I also did it in, in yeah. India. It's, it's emotional, right? So there's just so many, not just toxins, but emotions being purged out from the body. It was a huge touch. I mean, every day, they used to carry me at the end of the treatment, like hold me and be like, come on, Amy, it's time to go back to your room. And I'd be like, yes. And they were so sweet. And they, you know, it was an amazing place I went to. And I'll put the link for anyone who wants to do it, wants to try it out. But there's three, you get three therapists and they do treat, those three therapists do two, two, two treatments per day with you. So over 21 days. So, and then you have a few days of rest before you can leave. But, you know, you're on a quite a strict diet regime. They give you medicines, you're detoxing, cleansing. But the emotional purge was so big. And then literally, uh, 
I would sleep. Sometimes I'd sleep for like four or five hours after my treatment because I just couldn't emotionally. Like I was, I was so like empty. But that's great because I was, I felt so much calmer. And then since that day, and it's been nearly four or five years now since I left that place, my periods have been on the dot twenty eight days. I've never had a missed period, and I've had my son. You know, my periods have been like clockwork. That's such a great story. That's such a great story yeah. because it really proves, first of all, how intense hormonal imbalances can get. Really you know, yeah. and, and you know, I really was thinking as you were telling the story, um, men, they have a 24 hour hormonal cycle. They go to bed, they wake up in the morning, they have their testosterone rush uh, <laughs> and they are ready to go into a new day. And whatever happens in the day, at the end of the day, they will go to bed and in the morning they will wake up fresh and with a new supply for the testosterone. For a woman, we have a menstrual cycle. So it takes approximately 28 days to reestablish a normal hormonal levels. Mm -hmm. And even this 28 day cycle, it has its four distinctive stages. So we have the stage prior to ovulation, we have estrogen uh, raising, then we have ovulation when the egg bursts, then we are very sensual, very attractive, uh, unlike the first phase when we are very into new things. And then we have phase when we often, many women uh, feel different uh, symptoms like headaches, migraines, bloating. Yeah. It's all it's a reflection headache, of, migraine. yeah, imbalance of estrogen progesterone. And then finally the menstruation, if we are lucky, we get to have it. Yeah. And then a new cycle begins. And everything that you do, how you exercise, how you behave, how you sleep, how you eat, what you drink, are you drinking coffee? Everything has an impact onto your hormones. And so even when you start on this healthier path, when you start implementing changes, it takes several cycles to really feel the difference in your overall well-being. So it's a much harder uh, path for women um, on the one hand because it's, it's a whole bundle of these hormones and everything affects them and we suffer from many more conditions than men do but then on the other hand I wouldn't trade for anything I mean I love my menstrual cycle I love these surges of estrogen progesterone because when you are in a good place in life when you are in control of your health and everyone can be in control of their health and it's amazing to enjoy the menstrual cycle and hormonal rushes because then you can turn them into a beneficial thing, into a powerful tool to become more creative. When you have a strong power of speech, when you need time to you know, find peace and be alone and do your journaling and such. So a menstrual cycle is such a fantastic way to enjoy our femininity, uh, to also do checkups. How mm -hmm. are we doing in life? how mm -hmm. our body is striving or not thriving or not um so and uh, one more thing i wanted to mention in ayurveda that men menstrual cycle is one important uh symptom to be observed so we have all these checkups you check you check the um, blood pressure uh pulse uh you do um Nadi readings, uh, all these things, but you also check the menstrual cycle is an important vital sign that tells a lot about your health. Can I just ask, uh, regarding focusing just on the menstrual cycle, does the colour of your cycle, does that matter too? I believe that there is some, uh, you know, the, the form, the colour, how heavy or how light you are. Can you spread some light on sort of the connection between the hormones and the, and the form of your period? You know, uh, when you start to observe your menstrual cycle, so it's not just checking your bleeding, though I, I will share some details about that, but really when you are, and this is where journaling is such a fantastic tool, to write mm -hmm. down, it can be on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, to write down the symptoms, how you feel, how your behavior was that week, where you were mm -hmm. of an extrovert, introvert, any pains, um, any headaches, any um, bloating. When you start writing these things, you will see a pattern in how mm -hmm. your body responds to hormonal fluctuation throughout your menstrual cycle. 
And then obviously when you do start, when you start bleeding, then you can do some checkups of your menstrual blood, how it looks like. So for example, if you are a kapha dominated person, which means you have a heavier build, um, a, lo a lot of uh, water, a lot of mucus in your, in your uh, constitution, then your menstrual blood will be darker in color. It might have some clots in it. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of heaviness uh, mm -hmm. for kapha dominated woman. For mm -hmm. pita dominated woman, they tend to have slightly longer periods for like mm -hmm. six, seven, eight days. Uh, very bright, like scarlet red um, uh, blood. Um, and they will usually have very strong PMS, very irritable, strong cravings prior to menstruation. Uh, so these are very fiery women, uh, a lot of heat in them, and they tend to have very intense, very intense menstrual cycles. So I'm one of them. I, I used to have very strong PMS, extremely irritable, and uh, yeah, my menstrual, menstruation, menstrual bleeding would last for six, seven, eight days. Um, and then for Vata women who tend to be very thin, um, quite emaciated, they lean to emaciation and low um, uh, body weight. Uh, they are prone to uh, skipping uh, menstrual cycles. Uh, they experience a lot of pain uh, prior to um, the onset of menstrual bleeding uh, mm. and their bleeding is often very scanty, uh, very pinkish in color and such. Mm -hmm. And with the knowledge of Ayurveda, when we know these patterns of bleeding, we can adapt the lifestyle and diet uh, to correct them. Is there any, anything you can uh, tell us and for our listeners? like a simple way or something we could implement in our everyday life to start uh, to start balancing our hormones i know that seed cycling um is one of them and i've actually practiced that as well but recently i've been i i, I did some holistic testing and i can't actually have pumpkin seeds anymore <laughs> you know what i think uh the, it, it's a great idea uh, for listeners who don't know what it is, it's basically uh, rotating uh, different types of seeds uh, uh, throughout different fa phases of menstrual cycle in order to support estrogen and progesterone balance. Um, and from an Ayurvedic and personal experience, I really think that we should uh, implement nuts and seeds on a daily basis mm -hmm. and not exaggerate in any of them in particular periods of a menstrual cycle. So pumpkin seeds, uh, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, they are all fantastic and should be used throughout the whole cycle in a moderate amount, unless mm -hmm. you are suffering from a doshic imbalance when some of them might be reduced. For example, mm -hmm. if you are a very pitta dominated person, then seeds might be aggravating uh, for your constitution. So I think seeds are amazing. They can help you balance estrogen and progesterone, but in a moderation and part of a balanced diet. Again, we should look at a broad picture and um, to give you a direct answer to what you asked me, something practical, practical that your listeners uh, can uh, implement from today. First mm -hmm. step, the most important step is balancing the blood sugar. Mm -hmm. Blood sugar is the very beginning of not just the hormonal balance, but your overall health balance. So when your body is having a steady supply of glucose, which means having regular meals and having balanced meals, which means having your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and in each meal having sufficient amount of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Then you will have a steady release of glucose, which is the end product, product of carbohydrate metabolism. You will have a steady uh, influx of glucose and your hormones will thrive on it. And we are seeing that modern diet, modern lifestyle is based on irregular eating pattern, skipping meals, being addicted to stimulants, to coffee that uh, causes a surge of, uh, of glucose in the bloodstream. This triggers insulin production, this drains spleen, uh, adrenal glands, and puts a huge strain on the liver. And then mm -hmm. this is like a domino effect on your whole hormonal uh, health and eventually it leads to 
much more serious conditions. You gave your story. I also had a lot of issues. I suffered from acne. My adrenals were completely drained. Completely. So even, even a, a harsh sound would trigger an intense stress response in my, body, in my body. It just couldn't recognize what was a serious threat from what was an everyday sound or, 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 um, or an event. You do get, and I'm still quite sensitive if there's like a shrill uh, noise or something like that. And I find that very, you know, or if the TV is too loud and there's a movie on there and they're screaming and I'm like, I, you have to turn that off. Yeah. Body needs to digest everything. We keep forgetting, or, or perhaps you are not familiar with this concept. Our body needs to digest everything. So all our senses, it's not just the stomach, it's all our senses that need to digest the environment. So everything yeah. we see, hear, feel, everything needs to be digested. And mm -hmm. we need time and we need space to allow the body to, di to digest all the events, not just the food that we take every day. So this is where meditation and sound therapy that I'm mm -hmm. so happy to hear that you are now offering are such mm -hmm. amazing tools to allow body to digest everything mm -hmm. and to restore its homeostasis. We were designed, the human body was designed perfectly, perfectly. The only flaw is that we have our mind overthinking everything. Mm -hmm. But the body itself was designed perfectly and it yeah. knows it knows how to fix it's all sad. itself, yeah. how to delete all the offenses that we give it on a single on, on an everyday basis. But we need yeah. to sleep, we need to rest, we need to do fun things, we need to engage our creativity, we need to yeah. find joy in life. And this sometimes feels as a privilege especially to women, because this is my experience with my clients, especially women, they feel like they don't have this privilege to have fun in life. They need to do all the things, multitasking, my least favorite word. Yes. <laughs> yes, you need silence, you need moments for yourself. I cannot emphasize this enough. I, I literally tell people, schedule it, schedule it, put it in your planner, five, 10 minutes that you know you will be able to commit every day to yourself. You don't have to do anything. You can just sit in your room, stare in the ceiling, and that's it. If this feels right for you, just do it. But make sure that you do it every day, five, 10 minutes, just something for yourself. Sit quietly, meditation or not meditation. Of course, meditation would be perfect, but I know some people are intimidated by this process because they might not be familiar with it. Just sit in a room and be quiet, don't move. And eventually, in the beginning, you might be wondering, what am I doing? Nothing is happening. <laughs> Over time, you will start to feel how your body is feeling. Are you feeling tightness in certain area? Are you feeling heat in certain area? You will start checking in with your body and this will really help you to find what feels better for you. And just one thing I wanted to tell, I wanted to share with you, when you mentioned how, you know, our parents uh, how we carry this genetic blueprint of what we should be doing, how we should behave. When you add on top of that, that we are living in this modern age when apart from all of that, we are having food that is not of the same quality that our parents, not to say grandparents had, that we are having screens, that we are, all of us are addicted to, to screens. We are having artificial lights. We are living in huge cities. We are exposed to a huge number of people, to commercials. It is all coming on top of it. So it's a huge load. And more than ever, we need these gateways uh, to help the body purge all the excesses uh, and restore balance. So yeah. cultivate this habit of being quiet, of being still. We all know how stillness can be painful. We have all experienced it this past year, but it's actually what we and may maybe the nature also needs at this yeah, time. Absolutely. Maybe the nature also needed some quiet time from us. So let's learn from, from nature, take it as a lesson that stillness is what brings balance and uh, let's try all of us to cultivate it more. One um, yogic method of hormone balancing, Anna, um, what, which we practice is um, anulom filom, which is alternative nostril breathing. Absolutely. And would you like to talk about that and just, uh, and just fill a fen? Absolutely. Uh, well, even if you just start to focus on, on the breath, 
Breath is such a powerful tool. Uh, we often focus on diet, but breath is what keeps us alive. Life begins with, with breath, it ceases with the last breath. So when you start focusing on your breathing, you don't have to do anything else, just follow the inhalation, exhalation. This is the first step. Mm -hmm. You will immediately feel the relaxation, especially in the chest area and then in your whole body. So just follow inhalation, exhalation. You can do this when walking outside. Mm -hmm. You can do it when you are, you are just before falling asleep. You can also do that. This would be fantastic. Second would be if you can try to focus on prolonging the exhalation. So mm -hmm. if you like counting, then you count four counts inhalation and then eight counts slow and low exhalation. And then analoma, loma, uh, the um, uh, alternate nostril uh, breathing. This is also fantastic, very powerful pranayama technique. So basically you inhale through your left nostril, you inhale through your right nostril, then you inhale through your right, exhale through your left. So this is uh, also a fantastic uh, tool for um, using breath as a tool to control your uh, overall health. So yeah, breath is definitely very powerful. Also rest, cultivating uh, the practice of resting and uh, establishing a sleeping ritual. So we are all sacrificing our sleeping hours to mm -hmm. do so many things, sometimes even just to be entertained by the social media. Um, mm -hmm. Guilt as charged, I'm not ideal. <laughs> we all get caught up in uh, browsing late in the evening, but what we actually need is to set up a sleeping pattern. So ideally it would be to go to bed uh, between 10 and 11 in the evening and wake up as early as possible, if possible at uh, now during winter we can uh, get up a little bit later, so 6 or 7 a.m. is perfect, uh, during summertime a little bit earlier and it would be an extra bonus if you could wake up on your own without uh, a buzzing alarm which really disrupts your hormonal balance in an instant, it really uh, rushes. Uh, yeah, it's cortisol, yeah. cortisol really rushes yeah, yeah. instantly, first thing in the morning, and it really gets you so overly sen sensitized uh, is, yeah. already it's in sensitive. the morning. So it, it's yeah. it's the worst thing for your, for your adrenals and for your overall hormonal um, yeah. health. So if you can just use vibration, if you do need an alarm, then just set it on vibration. Uh, so it gently uh, brings you out from, from your uh, restful yeah. sleep. Yeah. What, what would you like to share with us, your final thoughts? Well, my health mantra is that everyone is its own healer. We are all in control of our health and of our life. Uh, and that I truly believe that using food, breath and conscious movement which basically can be yoga or any movement when you are present in your body, you are conscious of your body, that when using these three tools, you can truly experience a life of balance, life of health and life of joy. So I just want everyone to know that there is a way uh, and that um, they can learn all these techniques, uh, tools and uh, enjoy a healthy life. And um, yeah, I'm on a mission <laughs> to share all these tools. So I have a YouTube channel where I share lectures on uh, all these things, truly bringing the Western science, uh, meeting the ancient uh, wisdom, because yeah. I think we need the marriage of the two. Uh, being eccentric in any way uh, doesn't have to be perfect for modern generations. So if we marry the two, then we can truly get the most of these two worlds. Thank you so much, Anna, for coming. I really enjoyed our chat. I think it's been Thank amazing. Thank you for having me. I've learned so much. Um, and uh, please do send me the link so I can upload them for our listeners if anyone wants to follow you. Um, uh, I think your work is amazing and I can't wait to see more of it. And, um, you. and um, you know what? I'd really love to check in with you again in a few months post pandemic and once we're out of the lockdown and see how you're doing and, uh, and how things are progressing. It would be a pleasure again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I always love, uh, love meeting you and checking about these amazing, amazing things. Oh, so thank you for sharing your story. 
really yeah. thank you for listening and thank you to all our listeners um and we'll we'll see you very soon um with another episode of mantras and more bye